Hello, my name is Jesse, and today I'm going to be doing a quick guide on how to do uh, a life uh, a life bar, showing multiple hearts in this case, uh, showing hearts, uh, and it can be all the way up to like ten plus if you want. Uh, I'm I'm not going to show how to get all the way up to plus ten or anything. I probably could, but I'm not going to. But this will be just a quick guide, just to show how to do the processing and the action for it. It looks like it might be a little complicated, but it really isn't. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you need to have an object uh, for your for your actual uh, life pro or your life HUD and everything, you know, showing, or uh, your your life bar. In this case, it's, it's three hearts. And this is the way it's uh, set up. Health hearts are here. Basically, I've got three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and over nine. Basically, once it reaches the threshold of ten, you can have you can basically just go by however many, uh, however much your maximum health is, and just go from there. In this case, it can be up to a maximum of twenty, twenty frames, plus the zero, showing that you know it's that you're dead. So technically, it's a maximum of twenty-one frames. But it goes from zero, it starts at zero for all the frames, so and then it just goes all the way up to 20. Okay, so, how do we set this up? So first we're going to, it's like we have the processing line right here. Processing basically, it stays here until something happens. And it's always showing object self animation frame equals player's current HP, not max HP. Just the HP. Because that's what we want to be showing is uh, we want it to reflect how much uh, player the player's health is remaining. So right here, when the player's health is less than the current animation frame of this object, then we'll basically subtract... Well, in this case, actually, we're going to equal it to what the player's health is. If you want to do something that's a little bit more linear, where it it, it uh, basically subtracts every single, uh, like you, it subtracts one or two or however much, every single frame, you can just do uh, subtract or uh, minus equals one or two or whatever, and it'll take away that much until it reaches the amount of HP that the character has. Uh, then it basically just goes right back to processing. It basically loops around and stays there until something else happens. Now, normally, this would be fine. And then all you have to do is just tell it, oh, you know, uh, process this and, and whatever. And you should be okay. But the thing is, in this case, you're going to be adding hearts you're going to be adding you're going to make it look longer and everything so you need to start it out you need to start uh you need to basically start out with this showing um uh how to call it just it it you can do takes over motion so this way it just makes it a little easier but we're also going to do this under switches for this object add add heart the reason you want to do this is because of the fact that you want it to stop processing the start action uh, or or start processing it when it's on or off. Uh, let me let me let me show you. Right now, it processes normally. It starts here. Obviously, it starts at three. Then goes to processing and stays there. When it's looking for, um, when it's looking to see if uh, if uh, health needs to be uh, taken away or put back with your current amount of hearts, not only does it look for the change in HP, but it's also looking to see if add heart is off. And the reason why is because we don't want it going to start when we don't need it to. Start is only to check to see if hearts have increased, if maximum hearts have increased. So when it needs to, 
with the switch, add heart is on, it goes back to start. It looks for whichever for whichever link you're looking for. In this case, let's say you add that heart, it goes to four. You need to look for four. Switch variable changes. Player max HP equals four. Then it'll display the four hearts. Goes to processing, where processing takes over emotion. It won't show three anymore, it'll show four. And five, and, uh, and six, and seven, and so on and so forth, and on and on in that order. And at ten, it'll keep showing this one, but it'll 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 basically just stay there up to about twenty in this case because of the animation. And it'll just show a blue heart over the next one. You know, it, it, you can set it up however you want. Uh, but this is essentially how that how that works. So okay, how, where do we turn the switch on? This is the object I have to add a heart uh, to your uh, life bar. It starts. It's just a little thing. Now it's discover other objects which you have vision, a field of vision, lighting, etc. Touched. It has a little radius where it detects the object. Right? It detects the player object. Touched by player. Player get. Takes our emotion, so that way it's there. What happens here now is that it adds one to the max HP. It turns on add heart on, so that when it's processing, and this happens automatically, it basically knows, okay, it goes back over here, and it says, okay, so... This was changed to on. I should go back here. And then, oh, wait. Max HP is now 4. I should process this instead and go here. And then it shows you 4 hearts instead of 3. Then it also shows a player uh, get item, which is just kind of fun. This is, kinda, this is a Zelda clone that I was working on. Uh, you can do all the extra stuff. And then you, and then after after that, it just changes unconditionally, and it destroys this object. But the changes have been made. Now it's processing, but with four hearts instead of three. Then when you collect another one, it goes to five, and six, and seven, and so on. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here's the here's basically what's going on. We're gonna go collect the heart. There we go. Add, added the heart. Added the fifth heart. Now if you take damage, there we go. All the way to zero. So it works. Now here's another now here's another thing that uh, I didn't show. Let's go ahead and take damage. Okay. Go collect the heart. It fills it back up. Fills your life back up. Oh, jeez, okay. There we go, okay. Now we go collect the other heart. Once this mob is out of the way. I just want to go away. We collect it. There we go. Five hearts, and it refills. So, when you go to life add in objects, in player get, you also want to make sure that it says, that it says, Player HP equals player max HP. So this way it heals the player back to max HP and you get full hearts and everything. If you don't want to have to if you don't want to have to do that, you don't have to add that in. But this is the way I, that I'd want it to, to be programmed. Now I'm gonna show you something else. This is something else I've been working on. Fatality, essence, etc. Et et okay, now. We're going to go with life meter. This is a much more cut down version of what I'm using. Now, what is interesting here is that this can process any amount of life. I can set the max life to 
24, and it'll still work. I can process it, or I can put max at 24, and it'll still work. Uh, let me show you how this works, and it does show how it works linearly. So as you can see, the bars are adding up. I'm going to go ahead and run into the enemy. As you can see, life is being taken away slowly. And if I want to, I can go ahead and go over here, object data, normal scene only. I'm going to era, details. Let's put her HP at, there we go. If I put it at zero, oh, it goes down to, okay, if I put it at one, there we go. 15, one, so it goes 11, back up to 64. It's perfect. Now if I put max HP at 32, Then it'll stay at 32. And you see, basically, it's dynamic. It works because it's of the way the animation is working. See, this isn't using normal animations. This is using uh, stretching. So if you go, if I go over here to UI, if I go to life meter, first frame obviously is empty. Second one is one pixel, a one pixel object as well, one by six. Uh, and then the last one is still the exact same image but stretched out by 64. A scale of 6400 or 64,000. Uh, 6400, sorry. The reason why is because right here it's a scale of 100. One is basically just uh, less than normal scale. It's just one hundred percent. If you want to make it sixty four percent wide, or uh, basically sixty four pixels wide, you do this, and each uh, each pixel you go down by one hundred, and there you go. So when you play it, there you go. But make sure it's one pixel if you're going to do this properly. You can also do two, but then you also have to compensate to make sure that you don't do it incorrectly. Otherwise, it starts becoming really wonky. Uh, I did the same thing with a monometer for magic. And it all processes here. Now, if I were to do this, the, the, H, the, the meters stop at a certain point, obviously. Like 64 would be the max for both of them. But if I wanted it to start at a 32 and then gain so on and so forth, like uh, like whenever you gain some kind of uh, health power up or mana power up or whatever, uh, you can just set the max HP. This thing will just will still process it properly. However, what about the meter itself, like uh, the the little gauge? This thing, this thing, you basically make it work like the hearts, except. You don't have to worry about it tracking HP. Just set it up so this way it adds more to it, like it advances the frames based on max HP or max MP. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to set that up. And yeah, I think this would be the, the best way to do it, honestly. So when if you're doing hearts, you can basically just set up all the hearts in one animation and then limited to uh, max HP. And then, of course, from there, you can also just uh, do the back part of the hearts showing like how like the empty containers in its own little image and object. So this way you can subtract or add however, whenever you want. So yes, you can actually subtract, you can add whatever you want. So it makes it so uh, if you wanted to do where you want to exchange hearts for magic or magic for hearts, you can always go back and forth. That's the nice part about being able to do any of this, is that you can always change it at any time, and you can either subtract or you can add. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful way of getting it done. But if this is what you're looking to do, 
you can do it this way. If you're going to do it linearly, if you want to do it linearly the way I showed you, or the way I showed you in this in this game, then this is basically the way you're going to do it. It's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to check. In this case, character's name is Farah. Farah HP is less than object self animation frame. Then it goes here. It changes the animation frame, but it might, it basically subtracts one. Goes back to processing. Oh, it's still missing. Is it gets like, oh wait, there's still more HP missing. Let's go ahead and subtract another one. Go back to processing. Oh, it's done. Okay, then I'll stay here. You get HP from an item that gives you like uh, six HP back. Then it'll go over here. It'll do the same thing. It's like, oh, I need to add one. Go back here. I need to add another one. Go back here. I need to add another one. So on and so forth until it reaches that maximum amount of five. Then I was like, okay, I'm done. I'll stay here. So it basically, you have to make sure that the player's HP reaches that amount. And then this will do the processing for you. It's relatively easy to do. Um, you just need to do the extra. Uh, if you're going to do it the other way, which is the way uh, shown for this one, you need to do a little bit of extra work. But I honestly think that separating the, uh, the life bar from the actual, or r rather, if you're separating the life animation from the gauge itself, which would be like the back showing empty containers, whatever, would be a lot better because while you have two I as while you have two objects, those objects are working a lot e like a lot better, and you can do you can basically minimize a lot of different processing. But either way, it's better than having a loop, a constant loop that's checking over and over and over again. And that's basically using up CPU cycles. This, at least, when it stops here, it's not doing any processing. It's stopped, and you're good to go. Otherwise, if it's just continuously looping, it's going to use up CPU cycles. It may not be very much unless there's a lot of it going on. But believe me, it counts. It really counts. So you're not going to want a continuous loop unless it's, unless it's working. The best way is just to have it stay here, Check to see if there's any changes, and then have it loop back until it's done, and then it'll just stay there. Well, anyway, I hope that this guide has helped you out. Uh, if you have any questions, simply leave a comment, like, subscribe, etc., etc. You know what to do. Anyway, my name is Jesse, and I hope that you found this tutorial surprisingly helpful. Have a good night.